The Executioner is a 5 elixir epic card that has been in the game for over 5 years and today seems like a standard average card which is neither too bad nor too good. Its stats aren't that different today than how he originally was. However, this card has still had one of the craziest histories in the game. He is a ranged card who throws an axe in a straight line which flies back after reaching maximum range dealing its damage on both strikes while piercing through all its targets in its way. This card is most comparable to the Wizard. Showtime. Both 5 elixir, both long ranged, both deal splash damage. However, the Executioner never really replaced the Wizard, mostly because for a card to be replaced, it has to be in the meta in the first place. The Executioner has received 11 changes in its lifespan, which is not an insane amount for a card that's been out for 5 years. But what makes Executioner unique is that most of these changes were either massive stat changes or big reworks rather than small changes like you see with many other cards. The Executioner is certainly better off than some cards in the game today, but he is a card you probably don't see often. So today, I will be going over the history of the Executioner, why it went through the phases that it did, why it remains to be a niche card to this day, and why it will likely stay that way. The Executioner was released into Clash Royale on January 27th, 2017. This was a unique era of Clash Royale because instead of the 2016 method of releasing batches of new cards every couple months, Supercell had decided to go releasing one new card every two weeks, and the Executioner was released during this era. Because of this, there was a lot of pressure on the developers to create new cards fast. And sometimes when you work too fast, you make mistakes, and the Executioner was the golden example of this. This card was released into Clash Royale being the most broken card ever in Clash Royale, and I don't mean overpowered. This card had so many glitches that drastically affected it. This card had so many glitches in fact, that most people thought these were just features of the card and not actually glitches. The first glitch to note about the Executioner is that the Axe's hitbox was super janky. If you placed something on top of the Executioner while the axe was fully extended, it would still take a tick of damage as if the axe had hit it. This made it really frustrating to counter him. The axe's radius would also extend behind the Executioner when it came back to him. The axe had a 360 degree splash radius, so when it was just arriving back to the Executioner, the hitbox would extend behind him as it was within that radius of the axe. It may not seem like much, but this was the difference between being able to fully counter him with cards like Skeletons and Goblins. The biggest glitch the Executioner had was a stun that would reset the attacks of smaller units. This stun made cards like Mini P.E.K.K.A and Knight worse at countering him because their attacks would constantly get reset while trying to fight him. This stun wasn't like a zap stun though and it would only affect troops that took knockback from Fireball. Think of this stun as the type of stun Fireball causes without dealing the knockback. This means it didn't reset troops entirely, but more like interrupted their attack. I hope that made some sense. This meant it was actually an okay counter to cards like Hog Rider as it could counter it while only allowing it to get one hit on the tower. One more glitch the Executioner had wasn't that game breaking, but funny and I thought it was worth mentioning. If the Executioner turned around right before it was about to attack an air troop, the axe wouldn't come back to him, but simply keep going in the direction it was thrown, hitting everything in its way, and never come back. This glitch was rare, but a lot of players still did experience it. All of these glitches were so noticeable, and you could even find glitchy gameplay in the Executioner reveal trailer, although they did try hard to hide it. Despite all these unintended glitches that made the Executioner stronger in many core interactions, the card was overpowered, but not that overpowered. He certainly had his place in the game, and many players picked him up very fast. However, the card was still 5 elixir, it attacked somewhat slowly, and could be countered by a lot of troops for a positive elixir trade. A lot of players were frustrated at this card because playing against this card was inherently unfair. With so many glitches on his side, he won interactions he shouldn't have won, and in turn, won games he shouldn't have won. 
or at least won games for the wrong reasons. It wasn't fair that the opponent's hog rider only got one hit on the tower because the executioner kept stunning it. This wasn't what this card was supposed to be. There have been many iconic combos in Clash Royale history. Golem Night Witch, Ice Golem Hog Rider, Elite Barbarian's Rage, and the Executioner also had a match. Tornado. The Executioner on its own was about average at best, even with its glitches, but with Tornado, this card's power was truly recognized. The Executioner's splash radius was extremely good vertically, being able to hit troops a full 8 tiles away from it, which is longer than a Dark Goblin and its weakness was its horizontal radius. The tornado, however, corrected this weakness, allowing major pushes to be brought together, allowing the executioner's axe to hit every single troop within it multiple times. Although this combo would set you back a full eight elixir, it was extremely good at taking out just about any push. It was extremely convenient at the time as well, because the tornado was in its strongest state in its history, so tornado became even stronger thanks to a great synergizer being released. The tornado has a duration of only one second today, but back in 2017, it had a duration of three seconds, which meant it could not only control where troops went, but kept them in place for the executioner to get multiple swings off. So before we get into Supercell's next move with the executioner, let's compare the January 2017 executioner with the modern day executioner. The health of the executioner today is 5% higher. His range was also 5 tiles upon release, whereas today it is only 4.5 tiles. The maximum range of the Executioner's Axe is 7.5 tiles today, whereas then it was only 7 tiles. Which means even though the regular range is shorter today, the maximum range is longer than what it was back then. Another interesting fact is that the card deals the exact same damage as it did upon release, and has the exact same hit speed. The Axe's radius is also 1 tile today, as it was back then. So overall stat-wise, it doesn't seem that different at all today than it was then. How could a card that had received so many changes be almost identical to its vanilla release? How did it practically go full circle? The Executioner had so many bugs, it was going to need a full-on client update in order to be fixed. So in the meantime, Supercell decided to temporarily nerf the Executioner so he wouldn't be a menace. Sort of like a quiet removal. Supercell sometimes takes cards out of the meta so that they aren't disruptive to the game while they try and fix it. Another example of this is with the Royal Recruits back in 2018. Only 17 days after the Executioner was released, the Executioner's stats would be toned down until they could fix him in the next client update. The Executioner's damage was reduced by 6% in this balance change, which didn't change many interactions. The range of the Executioner also was changed from 5 tiles to 4.5 tiles, which meant the maximum range was 6.5 tiles now instead of 7. And finally, this last change was meant to be more of a temporary fix to stop the Executioner from hitting troops behind it, where its axe radius would go from 1 tile to 0.9 tiles. The next month, on March 13th, 2017, the game would receive a client update where it says in the notes that it quote unquote fixed all of the bugs of the Executioner. This client update did remove the stun, the infinite range glitch, and the weird axe hitboxes. The axe's radius was also reverted back to one tile in this update since it wasn't needed anymore to prevent the Executioner from hitting behind him. His card icon also got a massive nerf. <laughs> you may have questioned my wording a bit back there. Why would I quote Supercell saying they fixed all of the bugs of the Executioner instead of firmly stating it? Well, this is where my investigative journalism kicks in. The Executioner still actually had a glaring bug that was never acknowledged in the patch notes. Although somewhat uncommon, it certainly affected the match in many scenarios. This glitch did involve area denial. If the Executioner threw his axe and a troop came into his pathway of the axe while it was still in the air, even if it wasn't in the spot of the troop anymore, the troop would take damage when it wasn't supposed to. This glitch did eventually get fixed, but was never acknowledged anywhere in the patch notes, so I couldn't tell you exactly when it was fixed. After searching through dozens of random Clash Royale videos from 2018 and watching hours of gameplay, I did find one instance in a Clash with Ash video from March of 2018, supposedly a year after this glitch was patched, where you can see it in action. As you can see, the Executioner throws his axe, and the Prince is placed where the axe was after the fact it was there, and yet it still takes damage. 
the Executioner didn't get any attention from Supercell in 2018 up until September of 2019. So my guess is that it was finally patched then with the September 2019 rework since I couldn't find it happening after that point. But we'll talk more about that later. Although again, I cannot confirm when it was patched since again, it was never officially documented or acknowledged and never mentioned by any YouTubers I could find, likely because it was somewhat small. But all I can say is the March 2017 client update did not in fact fix every bug of the Executioner. The Executioner had not been in the game that long and had already been in every balance update since its release. The bugs were finally fixed and now it was time to make him viable. The very next month, in April of 2017, the Executioner's 6% damage nerf would be reverted. So now the Executioner was basically how it was intended to be. Except his 5 tile range was never given back, it stood to remain at 4.5 tiles. It may seem a little weird that Supercell wouldn't give this back, but at the time, the community was already kind of frustrated with the Executioner still, and even the 6% damage buff was seen as unnecessary to many players. Being a 5 elixir splash card in Clash Royale historically is the most oppressed group of cards in Clash Royale. Cards like Witch, Wizard, and Bowler were all kept in a poor state simply because they were incredibly annoying even when statistically balanced the Executioner would still find its place in the meta and was more popular than these other three cards. However, this card would not receive any major changes because it stayed in its place and never became too good. From April of 2017 all the way through 2018, through most of 2019, the Executioner would stay exactly the same, but that does not mean his place in the meta didn't shift over time. As I mentioned before, Tornado worked very well with the Executioner, and this card was actually the major problem. Tornado worked very differently in 2017 than it did today, and back then, the Executioner depended heavily on the Tornado. Without Tornado, Executioner was essentially on the same tier as the Wizard. You may wonder why the Executioner was really strong with Tornado when the other 5 Elixir Splash cards weren't. Here's the reasoning. Bowler couldn't attack air, which had too small of a splash radius, and Wizard died way too easily. Wizard's attack function also worked as a fireball that could only hit a small group of troops around the center of it, rather than the Executioner's axe that deals damage throughout the duration of its throw. Even though the Executioner would stay the same for the next couple of years, the Tornado certainly would not. Every tornado change would affect the Executioner because Executioner was dependent on the tornado's viability. This dependence issue was a problem Supercell would need to address. Supercell would not only need to get the tornado balanced since it was prominent in a lot of top decks and was a very strong card, but also separate it from the Executioner. The biggest problem with the tornado was that it simply lasted too long and was too good at crowd control. With lasting a full 3 seconds, the Executioner had so much additional time than it would today to hit all the troops in. It. In June of 2017, the duration of the tornado would go from 3 seconds to 2.5 seconds, and in April of 2018, go from 2.5 seconds to 2 seconds. These changes certainly weakened the combo, but they remained prominent. Executioner, even after these changes, still had a use rate of about 11%, but had a low win rate. It's likely that the Executioner's win rate was higher when the tornado was in the deck, but I can't find a statistic on that. The Hog X NATO combo was really the most popular deck Executioner saw himself in. The card combo was extremely solid, but really only in specific decks like this. Tornado was versatile and could fit into tons of other decks decks, but Executioner, not so much. It was clear that the Tornado still needed further nerfs to be balanced, but if it was nerfed, it would take the Executioner with it. Supercell would never want to put the Executioner through the same fate as Wizard, that would just be cruel. So in June of 2019, Supercell announced that major reworks would be coming for certain cards later in 2019, and the first card on that chopping block was none other than the Executioner. The Executioner was in need of a rework because it depended on an overpowered card just to be viable. It was an annoyingly effective card, but only in a niche. In August of 2019, a rework would be announced for the Executioner. And up to this point, a card had never actually gotten a rework as big as this before. This announcement absolutely shocked the community. The Executioner's damage would be increased by 98% almost double what he currently dealt. To compensate for this buff, 
his range would be going from 4.5 tiles to 3.5 tiles, as well as his maximum distance going down to 5 tiles. His health would also be slightly adjusted, losing 5% of it in this rework. The time the axe was in the air would also decrease, going from 1.5 seconds of being in the air to 1.1 seconds, but his charge time would be increased by 0.5 seconds, making his overall hit speed go from 2.4 seconds to 2.5 seconds. I didn't mention this earlier, but the Executioner is a bit unique when it comes to his hit speed. The axe when flying through the air is not affected by any type of slowdown or speed effect. This means that the Ice Wizard or Rage Spell doesn't affect the hit speed of the Executioner that much at all. So even though this change didn't change the overall hit speed that much, it made the Executioner more susceptible to speed factors. So what did this damage increase mean for the Executioner? When a troop got hit by the Executioner's axe both on the way there and back, it would deal almost the damage of a fireball, which meant it could kill troops that died to fireball like Flying Machine and Barbarians with just one throw. This change seemed to be somewhat based off of the Royal Giant rework that happened about a year earlier. A range decrease, but a massive damage increase. This type of rework for the Royal Giant put it in a perfect state, so I'm guessing they thought it would work well with other cards as well. To put it lightly, this announcement led to outrage. Memes ran rampant throughout the community. People were freaking out over this change because of just how OP it would make the Executioner. This change was so massive and everyone was preparing for a miserable Executioner dominant meta. So you may have expected a montage now showing off how strong the Executioner was during this meta, but I have none. And it's not because the rework didn't make it OP, but that the rework didn't end up happening at all. At least not how it was stated. With so much community outrage, Supercell decided to give the card a last minute change, which ultimately made the Executioner a useless card. Instead of a 98% damage increase, the card would now only receive an 82% damage increase, which means it wouldn't be able to one-shot Barbarians. But 82% is still a decent amount of damage, right? Well, no. Instead of the original plan of the Executioner's range going down to 3.5 tiles, it would now be nerfed even further to just three tiles, which is the shortest range a ranged card has ever had in the history of Clash Royale. The other planned stat changes would remain the same. Here is a comment made by a pro that is a good representative comment on how the Executioner was in the start of September of 2019. The Executioner is worse than ever. I use him to kill some long range troops, but since his range has been decreased a lot, he doesn't have that utility anymore. He is very slow, so it feels like he can e get easily killed by anything, even though his damage has increased. If he can't tr touch the troops, it's useless. The Executioner was in one of the worst states a card had ever been in in Clash Royale history to this day. In the history of Clash Royale's worst cards, it stood shoulder to shoulder with the 8 Elixir Royal Recruits and the Witch that didn't deal splash damage. Supercell made comment before the rework went live that they were nervous about the Executioner being dominant, despite the originally planned Executioner that went through lots and lots of tests coming back with low win rates. Originally, Supercell had made a comment defending their rework saying, well, if it's a problem, just pack a rocket. Unfortunately though, they did cave to the pressure, leading to this monstrosity of what was once something legendary. Supercell decided to cave to the community pressure of which had never even had a chance to play the new Executioner, mind you, in a completely unprecedented move to emergency nerf a card that wasn't even changed yet. Even though their testing showed the card to be on the poorer side, they couldn't bear the potential of the card being overpowered. This event actually led to Supercell refusing to emergency nerf cards this much ever again. Although it has happened with small changes like with Archer Queen or Earthquake, Supercell would leave these cards in their strong state for at least a few weeks to make sure they weren't overreacting. In future videos when I cover other cards, this incident will be brought up again for many of those cards when describing the hesitant approach Supercell took when dealing with these troublesome cards. I don't really understand why Supercell chose to cave in this instance, however, since it seems like there was a lot more outrage towards this Royal Giant rework than the Executioner rework. Ultimately, this led to the Executioner's win rate dropping all the way to about 35%. Before the rework, the Executioner had a win rate of about 40%, so it clearly made it worse regardless. Supercell was dissatisfied and embarrassed of how the Executioner turned out. This caused another wave of backlash and outrage at Supercell because this card was killed and now certain popular decks were no longer viable. The Executioner had been executed.
Only three days after this rework was implemented, this card would receive an emergency buff. This makes Executioner hold the record for shortest amount of time between two balance changes. Very few times in Clash Royale history have cards gotten an unscheduled buff, and certainly not this quick. Supercell wouldn't go in confidently with their full rework like they had originally planned, but they did give the Executioner something to work with. His damage would be buffed only by an additional 2%, which meant now he could one-shot a flying machine, but still not quite enough to one-shot barbarians. His range was buffed from three tiles to four tiles. However, his axe's maximum range did not correlate with this, which meant now that even though the executioner only had to be within four tiles of his target to initiate his attack, the axe only traveled 4.5 tiles in the air. This was chaos. Having this many emergency changes going back and forth in a time span of just a few days was annoying and just made Supercell look generally bad. Some people liked this fast approach of attending to cards that needed changes rather than waiting until the next set of balance changes. Props to Supercell because we always yell at Supercell when they don't make changes when they're obvious, right? I mean, fix this card, you know it's broken, why made it make us wait a month? The problem that I have with this is that Supercell gave literally no time for the original rework to settle in the meta. This is the problem when you listen to the community's first initial reactions purely and not off of any sort of playtested data. What position did this change put the Executioner in? Was it enough? This change alone was enough to make the Executioner very strong. He had a much easier time of killing troops now. What's funny is that the rework didn't even fix the one thing that was the initial problem with it, was that it relied on Tornado to be good. This point in time was the peak of the Executioner's strength. It cleaned up troops so easily, and his use and win rates along with Tornado were rising fast. Since the Executioner had a tougher time reaching troops, he relied on the Tornado more than ever. Although the Executioner was powerful, its full power was being contained by one fierce competitor, the Fisherman. This card was not only replacing Tornadoes in a lot of decks, but also could pull the Executioner to bad spots with its hook. Supercell had received a lot of backlash for their back and forth changes and it was hurting the game, so they weren't going to nerf the Executioner or the Fisherman so soon even though they both needed one. However, what concerned many players was that before the next set of balance changes, Supercell confirmed a Fisherman nerf was coming, but gave no word on a potential Executioner nerf. We're starting to see more and more and more Executioner, by the way, in CRL, in Grand Challenges, at the top of ladder in decks such as this one. But after the Fisherman gets nerfed, a lot of players are saying, I think Executioner will be really strong because I think the prevalence of Fisherman right now is actually the only thing kind of containing the sheer, the sheer DPS, the sheer power, the sheer dominance of the new Executioner. Did you think Supercell was done changing the Executioner for September 2019? Even though I've been talking about September 2019 for the last 10 minutes, we're not through it yet. On September 28th, 2019, the Executioner would get a first hit speed time reduction. This change came along with the September update and was actually a complete accident. However, this accident led to the Executioner becoming even stronger. Three days later though, on October 1st, 2019, a maintenance break would revert the Executioner to how he was before this update. This is a historical time in Clash Royale because the Executioner would have received four changes in just a 30 day period. From how he was for several years, to trash, to really good, to really really good, back to just really good, all in just one month. Even if two of these changes were a mistake and fixing that mistake, this many changes, accident or not, has never happened before or since in Clash Royale history. On the next set of balance changes, which would be October 7th, 2019, the Executioner would slide under the radar. Many players would be outraged that the Executioner would not be getting a nerf in this set of balance changes, but many would change their minds when they saw the meta that would await them in October of 2019. Remember how I said multiple cards were getting major reworks? Well, Executioner was just the first one. Which, another 5 elixir long term underused splash card, would be receiving a massive rework herself. Not only this, 
but the Elixir Golem would be released into the game, and the Night Witch would be getting a Death Bat buff. All three of these cards were extremely strong in this meta, which created an incredibly toxic swarm meta with Elixir Golem and Witches. With an overpowered Executioner in the game, it provided some sort of counterbalance to this other extreme of strength of swarm into the game. Even with the Executioner at its strongest point in Clash Royale history, the Elixir Golem Witch meta was so overwhelming that the Executioner didn't even feel like a top 3 card anymore. If this seems weird to you, just understand that October 2019 was one of the strangest metas in Clash Royale history. Many underpowered cards were really good during this time, and vice versa, because of just two cards that warped the entire meta overnight. October of 2019 may be forever known as the most chaotic, unbalanced meta in Clash Royale history. And because of the Executioner failure, not a single card got emergency nerfed the entire season. Although the focus of attention had shifted greatly off of the Executioner, it was not forgotten by Supercell, and in November of 2019, the Executioner would get yet another rework. His maximum range was increased by 4.5 tiles to 5 tiles. The Axe's hover time was also raised from 1 second to 1.2 seconds, which allowed for better area denial, but the Axe's radius went from 1 tile to 0.8 tiles. This nerf might not seem like a lot, but that is a 20% reduction in his splash radius, which made a huge difference, and also would make him more reliant on Tornado. At least 20% is better than 100%. What's interesting is that despite no changes happening between September 6th up to November 3rd with the Executioner, the Executioner went from being insanely strong to many players to him only feeling a tad too strong. A lot of pros say Executioner right now, just really, really strong. I do think that the Executioner was maybe a hair too strong. Now, this might have just been because of the Elixir Golem and the Witch being super OP, which took the focus off of Executioner, or maybe he had actually just settled into a decent position. This rework may seem like it doesn't change the Executioner very much on the surface, but there were a lot of other changes in November of 2019 that drastically changed the Executioner's spot in the meta with Fisherman finally getting properly nerfed and a lot of other OP cards toned down, Executioner rose to the top, breaking a 37% usage rate in Grand Challenges and a healthy 53% win rate, making him the number one troop in the game. And if it wasn't for that stupid piece of wood, Executioner and Tornado would be top two in the entire game. In November of 2019, over 90% of Executioner decks in Grand Challenges would also have the Tornado. This card status was jumping around so quickly, the community was outraged at Supercell for three months straight over this card for either killing it or making it conquer the meta. The card had been changed seven times in a three month period. Remember, it only received 11 changes throughout its nearly six year history. An Executioner nerf could not even wait until the end of the season. Just 17 days after its previous rework, Supercell would put out an apology for messing up this card so bad. YouTuber Clash with Ash really puts it best. Who is playtesting your game that they got it this wrong? Who's playtesting your game that they were this far off and they needed this many emergency balance changes on the same card in such a short amount of time? Supercell wrote an entire article on what they expected and what they learned from this experience. This article also announced that Executioner would be getting another rework in a few days, reverting back to its pre-September 2019 state. You may wonder why Supercell would apologize in this instance specifically. Like, the Elixir Golem was arguably much stronger and oppressive than the Executioner in October of 2019, and they didn't apologize for that card. A lot of players who played Executioner thought he was just fine before the September 2019 rework and were upset that Supercell ruined this card for them. Remember, at this time, having a maxed epic card was not as easy as it is today, so having this card be useless was devastating for a lot of players. Having a card in your deck have its entire function changed ruins the entire flow of certain decks. Even if it was statistically balanced, it wouldn't be able to be used in the same way as before. It's like giving the princess a damage buff of 50%, but nerfing the range to the same as the Dark Goblin. Taking away core mechanics makes cards unplayable in certain decks, despite what other buffs they may have received as compensation. Supercell's official comment was, and I quote, 
if area attackers like Executioner are statistically the same or even better than other more high skilled cards, it lowers the skill cap of the game overall by making these defensive plays just a feature of the card that is otherwise viable in a multitude of one-on-one -on -one situations. There were lots of defensive tricks you could do with cheaper cards that Supercell wanted to reward more than just putting down a simple defense card that does all the work by itself. On November 26th, 2019, this rework would go live. This made the range of the Executioner identical to what it was in February of 2017. Its hit speed was also reverted back to 2.4 seconds, as well as that 5% health nerf. And of course, his damage was toned down to exactly what it was upon release. His axe radius was also increased from 0.8 tiles to 1 tile. It's like he never changed. There was actually one change that didn't get reverted in this rework, and that was the Axe's hover time, as it still remains to be 1.2 seconds to this very day, rather than the one second it had for the first few years of its lifespan. One thing they also slipped in there was increasing his sight range from 4 tiles to 4.5 tiles, a stat previously never touched. This meant it was now slightly easier to distract him. I'm not sure why they threw this in there, but around this time Supercell was changing the sight range of a lot of cards, so honestly they probably just did it for fun. Although the Executioner was still back to normal, there was still one major problem. The Executioner in its normal state wasn't good, so how are they going to fix it now? It was back to square one. Since Executioner always heavily relied on Tornado and reworking Executioner didn't solve that, it was clear Supercell was going to have to focus more on the Tornado. Just a few months after reverting the Executioner back to normal, one of the community managers mentioned that the Tornado would be getting a massive rework soon. The duration of the Tornado would be going from 2 seconds all the way down to 1 second. There were other changes too, but I'm not going to bother discussing that because the time reduction is what matters in this case. This change ultimately really hurt the Executioner because the Tornado wasn't as good with crowd control anymore, which is what the Executioner benefited from the most. It didn't keep troops in place as long anymore, and therefore the Executioner couldn't get much value from it anymore. The Executioner did still work well with it, but nowhere near as much as it used to. Tornado and Executioner were officially comfortably separated, but as a result, the use and win rates of Executioner dropped. The card was falling into obscurity. For over two years, the Executioner would receive no support from Supercell, falling more and more into obscurity as each month passed. No buffs, no reworks. The Tornado was doing just fine, but it didn't need Executioner at all. With a massively unsuccessful rework and going back and forth for so many months, it seemed Supercell was fine keeping this card on the down low. Even the decks it had been a good niche card in had been fading out of the meta entirely. So on December 7th, 2021, the team was ready to take another crack at Executioner. However, they were going to take it small now, so it only received a 5% health buff. The only major interaction this really changed was now allowing it to survive a plus one level lightning. The change seemed a bit random, but at least it was something. Supercell had learned their lesson from 2019, so they were going to let the meta settle before touching it again, because obviously a 5% health buff is a change that needs a long time to settle in. Remember, this wasn't a reversion because it had received its 5% health buff back in November. After another 8 months, in August of 2022, when it was apparent that the 5% health buff still left the Executioner in a pretty weak state, it would receive a maximum tile distance increase from 6.5 tiles to 7.5 tiles, making it have the longest range it had ever had. The initial distance of how close he had to be to throw his axe didn't change, and the time the axe was in the air also remained the same, which meant it only helped the Executioner. It was an interesting approach that I applaud Supercell for, and it was nice to see that Supercell wasn't leaving this card completely in the dust. So how good is the Executioner today? Well, as of October 29th, 2022, which is when I'm recording this, the Executioner has a 13% usage rate and a 56% win rate, which are both very healthy stats for a card and actually calls the grounds for a nerf on its own. But wait a minute, when researching for this video a week ago, the usage rate was 3% with a win rate of 47%. The Executioner has not received any changes for over two months, so what caused this massive uptick of Executioner usage in just the last week? Although there haven't been any balance changes for any card in the time span of this video besides Goblin Mirror and Knight, 
two new cards were added which completely reshaped the meta overnight. I actually recorded the last 30 minutes of this video before the update and I'm redoing this last part just because of this unprecedented event. The Phoenix currently sits at an 81% usage rate, meaning literally the entire meta has been revolving around this one card, causing the use and win rate of every card in the game to fluctuate greatly. Barbarian Barrel now has a better use and win rate than Log, Minions have the worst win rate in the game, and every other card stat is drastically different than a week ago. So Executioner is not unique in this. This meta just happens to be a meta that Executioner works in much better than other cards. And funny enough, Tornado is appearing in every single one of these decks as well. Looks like all the X-NATO combo needed to dominate in the meta once again was one game-breaking bird. 81% is a higher usage rate than Supercell aims for when balancing cards, so the Phoenix will likely get nerfed and the Executioner's use and win rates will go down with it. Even though Tornado has been very prominent with the Executioner these last few days, I'm about to go on a spiel about how a 47% win rate, which is what it was before the update, is pretty good compared to what it used to be and that the Executioner was not reliant on Tornado anymore on top of that. With the 7.5 tile max range, the Executioner has been finding a niche place in the meta and certain old Executioner decks have been making a comeback. The interesting part that I saw with some of these decks is that they were actually replacing the Tornado with the Earthquake and still keeping the Executioner. So in my opinion, Supercell finally got this card right for what they were going for. This card is niche, but not useless, and no longer relies on Tornado to be viable, unless a really OP bird is added to the game. Then him and Tornado are right back together, rising in the meta once again. But overall, I don't think any further changes are necessary to the Executioner. As Supercell stated, the game just isn't as fun when long-ranged splash units are too prevalent, so slightly underwhelming stats are okay for a card like this. And obviously, he still has his place in the game when the meta calls for him. Also, just to compare to his 5 Elixir Splash counterparts, he's actually doing much better than them. The Executioner has certainly had an interesting journey in Clash Royale, and although I have been frustrated at this card a lot in my past, I'm glad he exists and props to Supercell for getting him right eventually. Personally, these major reworks, although game-breaking, really made me enjoy the game much more because even if one or two cards shaped the meta, it kept the meta from getting stale and repetitive, and I'm glad Supercell at least tried, because if they didn't, who knows where the Executioner would be today. I hope you enjoyed this video because this took a lot of research and effort to complete. I'm not sure if the Executioner has much of a future in terms of balancing, but obviously with events like the Phoenix introduction, the game's meta can be unpredictable. But perhaps it's time to give the Wizard a turn in the spotlight. His rework got cancelled back in 2019 due to the Executioner one being a total flop and hasn't been changed since. His last change was over 4 years ago and his use and win rates continue to be abysmal in competitive play. But anyway, let me know if you want me to cover the Wizard's history or any other card's history. Although these videos take a lot of research and effort, I love telling the stories of different cards new players may have never experienced or seasoned players may have forgotten. Preserving the history of Clash Royale is what I'm here to do, and as the present turns into history, I'll always have more work to do.